everyone. Uh, so yeah, I got a bit of a um, haphazard background in the media. Uh, like many of you guys here, I sat in an art school and wondered what the hell am I going to do with my life. I loved typography, loved design, loved illustration, wanted to be a special effects artist, um, wanted to be a matte painter, but uh, I was told it wasn't possible. Um, it wasn't something I could get into because computers were going to take over the world and your job's going to be irrelevant. Yes, that states how old I possibly am. Uh, <laughs> computers were just happening. And so I went into the realm of illustration and went to art school and did like many of you guys, uh, learned from many brilliant minds to find out where it is I want to go in the world. And I have found myself here in VR, funny enough, and I think it fits me perfectly and I quite enjoy it. And I'll explain why I enjoy it and how I use it from what I've learned in the past and brought it forward now to inspire other young minds and young generations that are coming up into this world. Um, so your first didn't look like mine. This was what I looked like when I tried my first VR experience. It was about 94. I put on this headset. I was at an expo and I was transformed into this world of polygons, literally big polygons, and I had a pterodactyl flying around my head. It was really cool, really exciting. It was about the time when movies like um, uh, Hackers came out, if anyone actually knows, it's probably vintage now. Uh, and it was diving in the idea of what virtuality and what computers do and how it all works and all that kind of stuff. And then after I did this experience, I thought, oh, that was cool, and I left it, left my mind. Didn't even consider it again until probably about a year ago when technology is finally catching up to what is in our heads. What we can see happening in the movies and how things are happening. Like even people always talk about VR being like the holodeck and Star Trek and all this kind of stuff. Well you see iPads and stuff like that. It was already being made in films and now these films are actually coming to life in our reality and how are we building this? How are we making this happen with the technology we have access to right now? So this is, um, before I got into VR, this is, one of the, this is still off of one of the pieces I did way back when, uh, and it was toying with the idea that kids and their imagination is so beautiful. It is this really beautiful moment where you can give them anything like a cardboard box. They jump into that cardboard box and they get transformed into a world that blows their mind. They create this world around them. You don't know what they're thinking and how they're thinking it, but they're, they're, they're fully immersed. Their imaginations are running. And this is where I find what VR can bring to these children, is that you allow them to run with their imaginations. You give them an immersive experience that unlocks their full potential. Um, when you learn in an immersive situation, you tend to absorb the content that you're watching a lot easier. Um, an example I heard on BBC Radio 4 a while back, which stuck with me, was this um, professor was teaching people about um, the movement of water and tidal waves and how they work. And she would teach in a classroom and give lectures about it, and people would glaze over and kind of go, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of paying attention. I'm reading a book, yeah, 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 let's read my text, and it wasn't working. So she went, well, I'm going to bring you guys down to the water, and we're going to look at the water, and we're going to watch it. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit better. People were kind of grasping ideas, and she goes, okay. She came up with this brilliant idea, which I think is unbelievable. She decided, I'm going to stick you in a wet set, wetsuit, and I'm throwing you in. And you want to really see how this waterway works? I'm putting you right in the middle of it. You're going to float down it, and you're going to see what's going to happen to you. So this is, again, another amazing potential of a VR. You're taking these people, kids, adults, us, and sticking them into situations where they're going to be fully immersed and feeling it and understanding it and locking their brains. And then when you take off the headgear, you're going, oh my god, I never thought of it this way. How, do I, how does it go further? How do I do this? How do I do that? And this is the beauty, again, of VR. Uh, I use this example, the letter G, because <laughs> learning anything, young, old, you remember how it triggers certain parts of your, your, your thought process. Like, 
I was handed a typewriter like this when I was a kid because my parents didn't want it anymore. And I'd sit there and bash away at the keys at three years old because it made funny noises and it made stuff happen on this piece of white paper. This popped up. This kept popping up. But what you don't realize is that on a keyboard, you do not see that shape. That G does not exist on the keys. So I would sit there for hours trying to find this G again, not knowing it was a G, because I was just learning how to spell. And then I realized there was two Gs. There's a capital G and a small G. This just opened up my mind to realize this and, and taught me this. And I think, well, I actually know, this is probably about the moment in my life where I became fully obsessed with typography. Uh, it, is, it, it, it started there, three years old with this typewriter. Again, this is what you guys can do with VR. You have this ability to create these situations that you don't know what will unlock in someone's mind in an imagination. This little snippet that you're showing them can change their future without even them realizing it. You are able to inspire people and you have these minds here that are immensely creative. So you don't know what it's gonna do. So I use this classroom because experiences go beyond the classroom. When you're sitting in a symposium like this and you think of this image where you're sitting there's old school tech and te teaching and you're going, oh yeah, I'm doing this, the same thing that everyone's done years upon years upon years. What is this possibly gonna take me? Well, it could take you anywhere and that's the part that I think that teaching people beyond the classroom is a very, very, very important tool because we all get stuck here, but it's what you walk away outside the classroom, where you want to push your brains further is what, where it all begins again. And again, I think VR, well, I believe VR, with the technology that people have a hold of, smartphones, tablets, computers, it already exists at home. I mean, HTC Vive's great, Oculus is great, HoloLens is creating new things, but families don't have this. They don't have access to it, but they do have access to these funny little things here that are changing everything. Holding a video and watching 360 or doing a bit of AR or gaming, it, it's, it's there already. So you can already make content that is already gonna be out there and touch like these young minds, any mind. So this brings me to the group of guys that I work with at the moment. So my background is in design. I work as a freelance director and stuff. And I've been uh, popping my head into this, this studio called Curioscope. And the reason why I'm drawn to these guys is because, again, like me, they have a full background in making content for the entertainment industry. We all went, okay, this is great, making a commercial for you know, Coca-Cola or something like that, but there's no soul. <laughs> so we wanted to give something back, and we wanted to feed young minds as if we were feed, like where the BBC brought us and, and uh, like David Attenborough bringing you to see places you've never saw before. We have this ability to do this for young people with a technology that they're, they're craving for. Because I know when I was a kid, I, I craved technology. I wanted the newest, greatest things to play with. Um, so this was the first promo, I guess we can call it, they did. And it was the Great White Shark experience. So uh, it'll play. No audio. Curiosity. 
So this is our first VR piece that we did um, on this grand scale. And what it was was to show everyone how education can be entertainment because a lot of people put this on and they see a shark and they go Ooh, and they get all excited but they don't realize in that process we gave them tons of information in that 30 second clip about sharks. And when we first did this piece, well, it's really exciting because because it's educational content, you think it wouldn't go anywhere, but it's actually hitting about a million hits on YouTube alone. It's free content for everyone to watch. Google Daydream picked it up and launched it on their big symposium on the big screen. And this is coming from the fact that they said education. What? You don't want to do education for VR? That's boring. No, it's not boring. Education is incredibly exciting. Hence why you guys are here. You guys, you want to learn, you want to absorb something, you want to understand more. So this is why I find this working with this team very, 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 very exciting. Because they're taking technology that's out there, and we're making it accessible and making it put it out in a way that is captivating these young minds. Um, this is a project we did called uh, on George Bull. And the reason I put this in there is because I think it's really relevant of what this room holds. People, the minds, the brilliance. This was a man who had no education really, decided that he wanted to prove something, that there's one singularity, he wanted to prove the existence of God basically. Bull wrote the Boolean algorithms. Ones and zeros. One man wrote, an, wrote calculus, algebra and everything out really a background in mass, created it all himself, and he gave us the computer. This is back in the 1800s. He did not know that this little algorithm, these, little, these calculus, the algebra equations that he wrote, was going to create this, a computer that I'm now sitting on, talking to you, being projected, and we're talking about something that we sit in and create a virtual landscape with. So you don't know all this technology that people are talking about in this room today, we don't know where it's going to go. He didn't know where this was going to go in 100 years. We don't know where it's going to go in 100 years. But it takes the minds of every single person in this room to use their imaginations and find inspiration within themselves to put it out there and watch it bloom. And that's what's exactly happening right now. And this is why I adore virtual reality, because it's constantly evolving and changing with every person who picks it up. It doesn't have a book written about it yet. It is happening now, finally. And it's really, really exciting. So put aside virtual reality, we decided to play a little bit in augmented reality. So the guys went, okay, we're going to make something that um, we can sell within the home, reach everyday family that they can do on their smartphone. So we came, they came up with an idea called the virtuality. I'll just play this in the background. This is a bit of a... It's a little reel of the behind the scenes Unity playing. And so this phone with a t-shirt coupled together, you hold it up and you'll be able to see a person's internal organs. Really simple concept. AR has been around for a long time. Tracking codes have been around for a long time. These guys geniusly put it together. <laughs> this is one of the dev stages that we were at. So this is us just learning how to play with it. We uh, did a bit of leap motion with the hands, seeing how that would work just for fun and the HTC Vive, and it's frozen. <laughs> Anyways, so we created the virtual reality. It is a beautiful little concept, which you guys can try in the other room, um, and you'll be able to see if the kids wear the t-shirt, they hold up their app, and we even have a, a clever little hand that you click on that it, it is, he's, he's called Hans Glover. Hans Glover, and, he, um, and he's this rubber glove that talks to you like a doctor and talks about your internal organs so kids can learn while they're staring at someone's heart. And what I found was fascinating, we were te testing this app inside classrooms. Before we even showing them what we were about to do, show them what it was all about, I asked kids, what, what subject do you hate the most? What is it? And they're like, oh, I hate biology. Just a big textbook with these big names, and I don't get it. It's really boring. I don't, I don't care what that thing does. And yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, I had that exact kid just pawing at me, going, I don't get this. How does it does? How does that? Like, I never seen organs like that. And and 
the excitement that was pouring out of these kids, like, can you do mass? Can you do this? Can you do that? I, I, they were just eating, they, just, they were eating it up. And I think that was really exciting. It got them excited about what was already happening in their curriculum in their classroom, just by simply showing them a different avenue of looking at it. So this is a pro of uh, the promo that we launched way back when. The t-shirts completely changed, as you can see. Um, this is what we put on a Kickstarter. By the way, I'm just going to say this lightly on the side. Kickstarters tread lightly. <laughs> They're not what they expect, you expect them to be. So this is the demo that we first did. We still have that. You can dive into the, the uh, artery system. You can dive actually into a lot of other ones. It has a selfie mode. <laughs> See, <laughs> gotta have selfie mode. So what I have to say for you guys, this is the beginning. Everyone in this room is gonna play a part in it if they want to, or if not, even just talking about it to other people, you're playing a part in it. It's beginning, it's starting now, it's growing. Um, and I, I do, uh, the only thing I do have to say is that do use a bit of social responsibility when creating VR. It is a very, very, very powerful tool. You are in, um, showing people stuff that is gonna directly affect them, good or bad, and whatever you directly affect someone with will carry on throughout their lives. You don't know it, it may be something small, it might be something beautiful, it may make them to be the next greatest doctor on the planet. You don't know what you're giving these people. So. I usually, when I work on projects like this, I know that if it inspires me and it's something I feel truly passionate about, and it will come through the work you do, and in that inspiration will travel forth to the person who else is going to be watching it, and hopefully they'll be inspired to create something else. It's amazing. So here's a bit of information. Oh, also, if you guys want to geek out just a little bit, uh, a bunch of us started a Facebook group called VR and Education, where we do post, post a lot of posts about creating VR content to inspire kids. Um, yeah.